talk will be given by Dr. Vittadello. It concerns photorefractive direct laser writing. Good morning. Today I will speak on my work on photorefractive direct, direct laser rating. Uh, this technique was applied on lithium niobate because uh, it's a material wide used in photonic application and uh, commercially available in large wafer. But uh, in particular, we used lithium niobate because of its strong photorefractive properties which is the uh, ability of the material to change its refractive index when it's exposed to a non-homogeneous pattern of light. Um, this work deals with uh, a modification of a standard direct laser rating uh, technique. In the state of art, this one consists in the um, ability to change the refractive index of the material scanning the surface or the volume of uh, the sample with the focused laser beam. In particular, in the state of art, uh, this technique is applied to lithium niobate using a femtosecond uh, lasers. Uh, this uh, permits to achieve a refractive index variation in the range of 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4. According to the literature, there are two um, uh, um, a regime, a low energy regime, in which the refractive index variation is um, deal with the nonlinear absorption, and a high energy regime in which the refractive index variation is achieved by structural or chemical modification. This technique is um, uh, well uh, known and it produces good results, but it has some disadvantages. Uh, this, uh, the laser source is very expensive. It's uh, difficult to model the result because there are lots of uh, processes that arise during this type of irradiation, and lots of property of the lithium niobate are affected during this exposure. Uh, this is why we develop a new approach on this technique based solely on the photorefractive effect. The idea is to engineer the defect structure of the lithium niobate to enhance its photorefractive properties, and in this way we can explode only a low-power laser, which is a chip, and uh, also an incoherent source. The result is in the same range of the previous technique, which used the femtosecond laser, because we are able to obtain refractive index variation in the range of 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4. Uh, but the advantages is that uh, this, um, the laser source is not expensive, and the refractive index profile is uh, easier to model, because only the photorefractive effect is playing a role in uh, this type of technique. Um, additionally, uh, we are able to create uh, some structure that are, are stable, but that can be erased easily, eating up the sample or uh, illuminating it with uh, an um, um, incoherent uh, source. In this way, we can reuse the sample uh, um, for an infinite time. Uh, for infinite time. The photorefractive effect, which I remember you, it's the variation of the refractive index, starts with a photoionization when the material is exposed to a non-homogeneous light of pattern. So the charge um, diffuse in the sample, they recombinate in the trap uh, in the part of the sample where the material is not exposed to the light, and in this way, an electric field internal arises, and thanks to the Pockel effect, uh, there is the variation of the refractive index. In particular, we dope the sample with iron uh, to enhance the photorefractive effect, uh, because the iron adds trap and donor center, and we are able to obtain greater uh, variation of the refractive index. The iron is incorporated in the structure only as iron 2 plus or 3 plus. 
in a lithium site. And lots of work now is currently in progress, as yesterday uh, show you Simone Sanna, to uh, understand better this defect structure. In particular, I show you here um, the electronic uh, uh, charge structure calculated by Simone Sanna by a nab initial uh, calculation. Here I show you um, the setup that I used to achieve this uh, type of um, refractive index modification. Uh, we used a low po uh, power um, beam laser uh, with a power of around uh, 30 milliwatt, which is focused on the top surface of the sample uh, thanks to a microscope objective. The sample is mounted on an XY stage, uh, computer controlled, we, uh, can, um, by which we can translate the sample. In this way, it's possible to realize non-trivial optical structure. This uh, technique is uh, fast because I'm able to create uh, an optical structure in the range of one minute. In uh, particular for this uh, uh, experiment, I used a um, lithium niobate doped with 0.1 mole percent of iron, which was grown in our department um, at Padova uh, with the Dicekraski technique. To um, characterize this structure, another uh, setup was uh, after developed. Um, basically, it's a Mach Zender interferometer in which I put uh, the sample in one of the two arms. In this way, by the, uh, thanks to the CCD, it's possible to have such type of, um, of results uh, that I show you. Um, here, the objective is to understand the variation of the refractive index thanks to the pattern fringe. So we study the difference because the pattern fringe of the optical structure that you can see in the center and the pattern fringe of the bulk one. So after, thanks to a numerical analysis, uh, I'm able to have this type of results in which I show you uh, different optical structure for uh, written for three different uh, laser power and for different writing speed. What you can be see is that there is no threshold intensity compared to the femtosecond laser technique. The largest variation of the refractive index is in the focal point, but there are significant modifications also below on the sample. And uh, as I told before, uh, it's possible to have a variation of the refractive index in the same range um, of, uh, obtained by the femtosecond laser technique. The second part of the work was devoted to model this type of structure, and in particular, we want to understand delta N. And to do this, we need to know the internal electric space charge field. So we uh, assume uh, for the model the simple photorefractive, photorefractive model, which consider only one donor center, which in our case is the iron. The model is based on kuktarev vinetsky equation, and to solve this system, it's necessary to model in a properly way the shape of the intensity uh, laser beam. Uh, after this work, it's possible to solve analytically the system to um, understand the space charge field. Here in the formula, there are uh, some free uh, parameters that we have to adjust in the simulation to better accord with our um, experimental results. Uh, so here I show you the results. In the first line, there is the experimental delta N map, and in the second line, the model one. As you can see, the accord is uh, very good between the two lines, and it was obtained uh, with the same set of three uh, parameters. Uh, there is a good accordance except for the last... Uh, uh, part of the experiment, it's, there is not a complete agreement because the one center model is not sufficient to describe completely the situation. 
because the one center model um, works good only with low intensity. Uh, so the, in this case, the only donor is iron. But if the intensity increase up, so in the range of uh, one uh, megawatt over square centimeter, it's uh, necessary to consider another um, intrinsic defect uh, named niobium antisite, which uh, starts to play a role and contribute to the photogeneration process. So uh, it's necessary to substitute the one center model, model with the uh, with a, um, two uh, center model. Uh, this technique uh, was uh, used to create some, um, typ some typical device and in particular we applied uh, it to create some diffractive elements. So I was able to create a periodic uh, grating and an aperiodic one. We used this technique in particular to create diffractive elements because it's not possible with the standard holographic technique create an aperiodic grating, but it's possible with this technique. So studying in uh, transmission the two grating, it's possible to see in the reciprocal space the good quality of the diffraction spectra, which indicates the good quality of the structure created uh, by our technique. So, in conclusion, I was able to create a new um, direct writing laser technique based solely on the photorefractive effect. This technique is more versatile and uh, cheaper than the femtosecond laser technique. The results are a stable uh, structure for a long time, but that can be easily erased heating up the sample or illuminating with an incoherent source. It's possible to model in an easier way with the one um, center model the results if the intensity, of course, is lower than one megawatt over square centimeter. And it's possible to applicate this uh, technique to create non-trivial um, optical elements as the diffractive element that I show, but also optical waveguide that we have also tested. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions or comments? Please. Just a quick question. Your sample, is it stoichiometric or congruent? Congruent. Lizard, congruent leader okay. Yes. And the concentration of iron, is it nominal or have you uh, actually measured the amount of iron that you have in, in the sample? Um, it's a nominal, but it was measured and it corresponds to the effective concentration of uh, iron. Other questions? Just a curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, up to which temperature your defects keep to be stable? Do you, do you have information about that? Um, we, uh, at room temperature, if we start to um, um, eat the sample, it starts to raise the, the structure. Thank you. If there are no more questions, we thank the speaker again.